All right. So good evening, everyone. And thank you so much for joining today for this very crisp understanding of an article. And uh, all of you joining here has reinforced my uh, conviction that all leaders, they really want to do something to retain nurses better. And in India, we don't have much studies, though it is not a copy paste the culture. But I think what I'm going to share with you from this article is going to ring a bell to each one of you, because if you are from corporate, I'm very sure you will you know, subscribe to what I'm going to share. So uh, let me just pull up my presentation and then we can start. Okay, can someone confirm that, you know, you can see my yeah. slide? Yeah, very clear, yes. very clear. Okay. Great, great. Uh, Anup, uh, if I can request you, can I make you co-host? You can just admit people if you don't mind. Sure, ma'am. Okay, so I'm just making you co-host. You can help me just sure. admit people and muting in case someone by mistake, you know, disturbs the session. So thank you so much, Anu, for that. So friends, once again, a very, very warm welcome to this evening. And uh, so many of you are here. It really means that you care for uh, retention of nurses. And today we are only going to talk about this particular article. And if we have some time left, maybe we will have a little bit of free flowing, you know, discussion. Whatever you are going to hear today, it is not going to be shaking or something totally different. You know, you are not going to hear anything like that. When you are going to hear those things, I'm sure that all of you are going to say, oh, this is something I know. This is something I do. But there is some evidence coming up. So let's see what would that be. So um, this study was done by uh, Crucial Learning, and I don't know how many of you know about them. I have known them for many years. They have written very relevant and practical, you know, books. You know, they crucial confrontation, crucial conversations. You know, they they have multiple books, and now they have you know progressed, and now they have started a lot of uh, you know trainings, etc. So Crucial Learning has done this survey with AONL, American Organization of Nursing Leadership, which was known as AONE before. And together they have done this particular study. And we will get into the details of it. And here there are some surprises, you know. They were trying to find out that which nurse leaders, they tend to retain their nurses more. So, um, so now uh, this statement which is here is nothing new to any one of us. We know that COVID created nursing crisis. This is what we are saying. Uh, but in US, they said they did not create nursing crisis even before that they were struggling with the 20 to 30 percentage of, you know, unfilled position so we all know that across the world there is a shortage of nurses but uh, the COVID came and it just increased the stress levels and that led to higher attrition this uh, COVID per se may not be the reason for our attrition we have a different story but the content of the uh, the story is very important to remember so just give me in the text box if you think that, you know, COVID contributed to more attrition. No, no, not in 2020. Right now, is it a reason for attrition? Yes or no? Can you put it in the chat box, please? Just you can type Y and N. So already Bhavna is telling no. Okay. Can we get some quick, quick typos, typos, typos? Okay, everyone seems to be thinking that it is no. All right. 
So um, I'm going to just run a little before we start. So I'm going to ask you um, a question. I'm going to just launch it so you can just answer it on your screen, okay? So do you do employee rounding? That is the question. So please uh, just answer. And um, I'll give a minute before we stop the poll. So we need get we need to get some more responses, please. Yeah, some more, some more, please. Okay, we got about 18 responses and I'm going to end the poll and I'll share the results so you can see on your screen. 84% uh, told that they do employee rounding and 16% they said, no, they don't do employee rounding, which is fine. I mean, that is what your answer is about. So we'll stop that. And um, I'm going to give you one more poll. Okay, just give me a moment. So there's another untitled poll that is coming up. How effective is this rounding for retention of nurses? So you just answer whether it is excellent intervention, not effective, or you're not sure. Okay, I'll give a minute for that answer also. Yeah, some more, some more. Okay, so let's share the results now. So we have 57 percentage uh, who says that this is an excellent intervention for uh, reducing the or retaining the staff or reducing the retention uh, attrition. And 43 percentage is not sure. Okay. So this particular study is all about what is going to happen when you do employee rounding. It's a very interesting finding. I'm a hardcore believer of you know employee rounding i always train this whenever i do the leadership program i always talk about this i also same time talk about something else and i'm very happy that you know this study kind of validates my thoughts around any intervention that we will do to improve you know retention or for anything else whatever improvement that we are going to do so this study is talking about, did I, no, okay. So every increase in turnover. So what they are saying is that it's a safe, self-reinforcing negative cycle. I'm very sure that all of you agree with that. The higher the attrition, what happens? Higher the stress level. And higher the stress level, it will stop you from giving the best intervention or patient quality care that you would like to give it is going to stop that when it stop that it will again increase the attrition because people they don't want to work in a setup that you know they feel unfulfilled or sad and that will lead to more stress because there is again less staff and you know so it's a continuous vicious cycle that we create because of the higher turnover now, on top of it, please remember all these words and sentences are taken from the study. 
It's very interesting that overlay this with an escalating wage arms race between hospitals, desperate to maintain staffing levels and the temptation to attract for nurses becomes irresistible. So this is what, you know, every hospital is trying to take nurses. And this is not very different from what we all are feeling in our country as well, right? So, but the study also says, but it's not everywhere. So they found some exceptions and some nurse managers, they have created very different reality under the same conditions that have overwhelmed others. So this study is about, you know, comparing nurse managers of similar, you know, threshold of the, you know, similar number of beds, similar number of care. So they have kind of maintained a balance in looking at, because so that, you know, we don't say, oh, because they are, do they are like this, they are able to, reduce the attrition. So at least in US, they don't have a challenge of differential salary. It is pretty much, you know, it is, they, all of them are comparable. So the, the article goes on to talk about that, you know, the solutions, I'm very sure that all of us have these solutions, but they found they were not enough to keep the nurses. Scheduling flexibility. In US, it is very easy that you can decide what duty you want to do. So, and investment in development. I'm very sorry for that one typo over there. Improved onboarding. So all of us do induction and you know extensive onboarding training. We all are doing that. Engagement surveys. I'm sure that all of us are accredited hospitals. So we all do employment employee engagement surveys and we do something after we see the results also and the last one is innovations in compensation and uh, i have heard you know after covid you know, since covid came in there are different ways of you know structuring the salaries and uh, nursing directors all of you sitting here nursing heads are struggling to find some formula to ensure that the nurses are you know engaged and they are there with you in the journey towards giving the best patient care. So um, I am sharing the article verbose, whatever you see, see here on the slide is they're all taken from the article. I may be adding some of my thoughts around that. So despite tremendous focus on improving retentions, results have been mixed at best. Now, if you go and look at, you know, retention, attrition word into Google Baba, or you go and put into the you know, YouTube, you will find that, you know, you know, you will find lots and lots of studies and for everything is not painting a good picture. It is only talking about that the future is going to be bleak and uh, India is going to lose more nurses. We know that. So we do have a different challenge, not only the attrition, we also have not only the quantity, we, all, we are also struggling with quality. But is there a solution to this that this study is talking about? Now, this study focused more on employee rounding. A lot of you, more than 50 percentage told that, you know, you are doing 80, 80 percentage, I think you're doing employee rounding and more than 50 percentage of you believe that is an excellent, excellent intervention. Now, let's see what did the study talk about, you know? The, the study uh, only asked, you know, a couple of questions, the employee rounding. That was the major focus of the uh, survey that they have done, you know. Employee rounding, like many of you believe, it should substantially reduce the turnover. But is that the case? That is the question that they wanted to understand from this survey. So this survey was done uh, between January and March 2023, that is this year, by Crucial Learning. As I told you, this is an organization with great authors. They have a lot of books. And if you go and look for anything with Crucial, they, those books are written by, uh, there are uh, two authors that I know of. One of them is the um, partner in this particular study. And of course, American Organization of Nursing Leadership, they wanted to ask a couple of questions. Are there hospitals, departments, and units 
that face comparable stresses to high turnover places but have markedly lower turnover as i told you they found you know units and hospitals or even you know departments where the you know the stress level is comparable but was there a difference between the retention rates or the attrition rates that was question number 1 question number 2 was that do varying practices of nurse managers account for substantial part of these differences now i would like to ask you a question here do you think that the nurse managers that you have the retention or the attrition is dependent on how these nurse managers manage their team yes or no you can just type in the chat box There is no rocket science here. Everybody is telling it is yes. So it goes without saying that mid-level leadership needs to be really equipped in team engagement. Apart from knowing the processes and the clinical piece of everything, they have to know how do they engage with their team. And employee rounding is one of the strategies that have been introduced, I don't know how many years ago, uh, I am not sure because I had been knowing this for a long, long time. Employee rounding was introduced by the crucial people. Uh, they have done a lot of work in healthcare. So they talk about uh, confrontations, conversations, you know. So in all that, there are strategies written in the book and employee rounding is one of them, okay? A apart from the uh, focused patient rounding, they talk about employee rounding and we have heard of you know, CEOs who are doing employee rounding on also to ensure that they're engaging with their uh, employees. Uh, so let's um, that the study. So as I told you, it started January 2023. They just firmed up the questionnaire, the survey questionnaire, March to 1st April. One month they have ran the survey. And uh, 1,558 nurse managers have taken the survey and 562 bedside nurses. So the questionnaire was given to managers and the bedside nurses were also responding to their questions. In this article, the questions, the questionnaire per se was not available. So I will not be able to share that. But it's important to know that not only this particular study, so what they have done is they have done a similar study earlier uh, that is with Joseph Grenny is the author and the future learning team. They conducted in 2022 in partner with the healthcare system, HCA, uh, with more than 2,000 sites and close to 200 hospitals. So finally, they, we are looking at uh, 100,000 nurses you know, responses. And that is what they have, you know, studied to see that what is the story? What are the nurses trying to tell in the survey? So uh, to gather data on a comparative turnover, nurse experience, nurse manager practices in a large sample of US hospitals. So they ensured that the comparison is similar. So they did not go to all the hospitals. Now, so the first question was to see that what happens when two units, two hospitals of similar services, similar stress level in a comparative labor market. Labor market means the salary is also the same. So what is going to happen? Is there a substantial variation in retention? So they examined that in the similar kind of a thing, is there a striking difference? And you will not believe this. The study says there is 60 to 70 percentage difference in the employee retention in certain units. They are better at retaining the nurses. So the next question was that how much of it is being contributed by employee rounding? Because that is touted as one of the best intervention a leader can do. And I, I totally agree with you that it is useful but the study will tell you how can you make it more useful okay so this is very important so there are findings and I was surprised when I read the report that's why I decided that I should be sharing with more leaders in the country so uh, there's a lot of you know verbose available in the report 
So here talking about, I was threatened in the workplace by a patient. My colleagues were instantly supportive and encouraged me to advocate for my own safety. By my management, however, was not supportive. So is this a positive response or a negative response from the staff? You can write P or N. Is this, is this response P or N? Okay, okay. So all are very clear that this is very negative. Yes. So maybe the department. Yes. So there is a role for the organization management. Ah, 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 Excuse me, who is speaking? Can okay. I just... Thank you, sir. Sir, you are going to go there. Sir, is he muted? Sir, sir, properly, I have a phone to put on the phone. I have a doubt. One second, let me see who is speaking. Okay, I think... Yeah, I have muted them. Please continue, I have muted them. Thank you, thank you. Okay. So the second one, I thrive from helping those around me and watching them grow. Sadly, I don't find joy in interactions with leadership. What do you think? This is P or N? P or N? Can we have some more responses? So this could be the predicament of many leaders and managers. You know, So uh, it's very much possible that you know you are trying to do best and then you know maybe there is a challenge there also i totally agree with all of you the our computer system went down for an extended period i saw no leadership here that night or even the next morning to see how things went and to ask what they can do to help weeks went by and as a night shift nurse i did not see anyone from leadership positive negative and it's not rocket science, right? So when I was reading this this particular you know sentence, I kind of relate. I was recollecting a story. I usually share this in my leadership course. Uh, this is when I used to ask my staff, you know, about the shift supervisors. I used to ask them directly with the name because shift supervisors are not many. So I need to get feedback. So I'll ask them by name that how what do you think about this person this person this person generally you know one or two questions not many so this i'm asking usually the team leads who are doing shift you know duties not the ward in charge the ward in charge may not see the shift supervisors and maybe they don't need them to be around also so when i ask uh, when when a particular name came so my uh, icu in charge you know he told him ma'am uh, can I tell you, she's very good. She'll come around, she'll go bed to bed and she'll do everything. But the day we are super duper busy, she'll not come for rounds. You know, she will be only on the phone asking, how are things, how many staff? That's it. And she'll put the phone down. So that kind of a response definitely will be a negative. I don't need to even ask you the question. So that's a different story. What I did after I got that feedback, that's a different one. Okay. So the second question was about employee rounding. By this time, I'm sure that all of you must have guessed that, you know, employee rounding is not being affirmed as the best intervention. Intervention is good. But the results may not be what you, we, you and me would like to have. So what did they find? 81 percentage of the managers, like we got the answer now, in our study reported that they round regular. But the same question they asked their staff. So what do you think is the percentage of nurses who knew that their leadership is doing employee rounding? Just do a guesswork, please. What percentage of nurses might have, you know, known that there is employee rounding by from their leader? Just do a guesswork. Just put a percentage. It has told twenty five percentage. Okay, forty five, thirty. Gurubhaks is telling 70% of 
40. Okay. You all are very smart leaders. Huh? You are very close to 36 percentage. They call the nurses clinicians. Say their managers round regularly. So that means 36 percentage was aware. So in the you know details, there is a possibility that you are doing the round, but they do not perceive that as their rounding. It is not the uh, rounding of the patient, all right? So, so what they finally say is, it's that rounding is being done in a way that it is meaningless to the real concerns of frontline nurses. Because when the crucial learning people, when they introduce the, you know, employee rounding, they have given a format. They had given few questions to ask. So when I do leadership training, I do find that when, when we talk about, you know, you must ask this, you know, two, three questions. Everybody thinks, oh, this is all drama. This is all mushy, mushy. Uh, maybe there is a possibility, you know, that maybe we can do some more rigor into what we are doing. So let's go ahead and understand what does the study say. So if rounding does not relate to retention, what does? So the, as the study result is rounding is not leading to retention. So what is going to help? So that is very important to know what are effective at creating connections. This word is very important, connections. And I think this is forever a truth for all of us, whether it is in professional life or in personal life. The connections are very important. So what did they find that, you know, if you make the right focus, there is a possibility that you can have more than 80% of results that can happen. And this more than 80% of the people actually shortlisted three things. And I'm very sure all of you agree with that because, again, there is no rocket science here. Care. Do we care enough for the team members? We are not talking about the patients at all here. We are talking about the our own team members. Now, caring is in action. It's not by saying, are we contributing to their growth? You know, are, are we... Are we having that dialogue that, you know, I care about your growth? Are we there to help? When I say we, we, I'm not just talking about the, the nursing leader right on top. I'm talking about all the leaders, you know, up to the level of team leader, you know. Do we create that kind of an environment, you know, so that they don't feel like leaving? So let's talk about some of the, you know, dialogues that came in under care because there's a lot of, you know, uh, verbatim responses which said that you know how do they feel they're being cared so I, fe I feel a sense of belonging and I believe that my manager cares about me as a person so this is important to know that you know we are able to connect one-to-one -one with our team members so it, it depends on that you know who is reporting to whom, whom you know there has to be a one-to-one -one connection and this is also very important. My nurse manager came in a, in her day off to provide snacks and certificates for certified nurses day. Now, what the nurses are saying is they want to have a personal touch. They feel good when, when you go out of the way. I'm very sure that most of you do a lot of things like this in your organization. It is not that it's not being done. But the thing is that doing once in a while is, is a pulse action. There has to be a culture of, you know, uh, caring, allowing growth and helping each other. So the third one, I was invited to round with senior leaders, which I appreciated. Now, this is very important. I remember me as a ICU in charge, you know. Uh, I used to really feel very pissed off when my nursing director will come with some, you know, guest and, you know, they will take them around to my CCU. So I was very upset. So I had to go to the nursing director one day and say, ma'am, 
that CCU is my, my unit and I'm the boss. So when you bring someone, don't you think it's very important that I should be introduced and I should be taking you around? I said, I felt very left out. I had the courage to go up and talk. So now the question to ask is that, you know, um, do we always do all these things? These are, you know, just, just samples, you know. And also I remember, you know, the work-life balance. It's a very misused word. I know that. But I can only tell you one story that when, again, when I was working in um, Saudi, I had a Canadian nursing leader. And we were going through a very, very tough time. I had 16 beds and we had 16 patients on ventilator and it was a multidisciplinary ICU. So there is like mix of, you know, medical, surgical, neuro. And you can imagine, you know, we had to bring all the ventilators and one patient in isolation was actually put on the anesthesia machine because we did not have ventilator. So it was like a crazy week. I mean, it was like, it was never ending, you know, it was like going on and on and on. And whenever, you know, Lisa, if that was her name, whenever she'll come for a round, she'll see that, you know, we are, we are very, very busy and we are trying to, you know, manage, support each other. We are trying to do whatever that we can. And I did my best to support my team, you know, just ensuring that they had their bricks on time, they had their water and their coffee, you know. I, I, I had to make sure that, you know, I go and relieve my nurses myself and say, go 10 minutes, have your tea and then come back. You know, I did whatever I can, but I, I looking at my face, Lisa knew that I'm, I'm getting tired. So when it, it has gone on, so one day there, the weekend is Thursday and Friday. So Thursday is half day for us and Friday is full day for the nursing heads. So she called me just about, I have not had taken the half day I was still in the unit so but 3 three thirty, she asked me you come down and you know you're going to have you know a cup of tea with me so I said Lisa I'm too busy she said I'm ordering you to come down you know you have to come down close whatever that you're doing come down so she kind of ordered it so I had to go down so when I went down she gave me a cup of tea and then she said okay let's uh, you know I'll take you to the hostel because she was staying in a I, you know, villa in the same compound and I was in the hostel. So she said, okay, let's take a walk. Let's take a long walk. So we took a long walk and we were talking about what happened and I was sharing, you know, how the unit is running. I was actually talking about different staffs and then she asked me that, you know, were you able to give a break to your staff? I said, yeah, I somehow made sure that all of them, they get a break and uh, tried not to have uh, double duties because it was like too much. We did not have a major challenge of not having enough staff. That was not a problem. It was the sheer, you know, activity and the criticality of the patients, you know, it was difficult to manage. So when her villa came first, so when she, so I said, Lisa, we have arranged. Thank you so much for the tea. And I'll see you on Saturday. Then she said, I don't want to see you Friday and Saturday. I want to see you on Sunday. So I said, Saturday is a working day. She said, exactly. So today is Thursday. Almost the day is gone. Friday, Saturday, you take a break. I don't care. Don't come. So I, I just looked at her, I said, Lisa, she said, this, this is an order. And she gave the name of the next person who can manage. She said, if you want, you can be on the phone, but I don't want to see you in the ICU. So that is what is about, you know, being aware, being aware of what your team members are going through without, without even telling. And on the other hand, I have a very long story. It's a very sad story where, you know, the manager did not, you know, recognize that the nurse is going through a very bad time, but the patient recognized and he called and he told me, and how many of you know Hindi? I don't know. He told me that hum jab aate hain hospital mein hum dukhi hai. Lekin aapki ye choti ladki jo nurse hai, ye maha dukhi hai. To ye, ye mujhe na inka... आप मुझे कि कोई और नर्स दे दो इनका मुंह नहीं देख सकता मुझे बहुत दुख हो रहा है द पेशेंट रिकॉग्नाइज दैट दिस नर्स इज गोइंग थ्रू अ वेरी वेरी टफ टाइम एंड हर मैनेजर नेवर न्यू दैट सो दीस आर सम ऑफ द स्टोरीज व्हिच विल नेवर एवर आई फॉरगेट एंड ऑफ कोर्स ऑल दीस स्टोरीज 
um, I use in my leadership training. And I'm sure that all of you have a lot of stories. I, I definitely request all of you that when you are talking to your people, talk, talk to your team members, please use more of storytelling. You know, it would have a better impact. So we talked about care. Now we come to growth. And uh, I'm very sure all the hospitals, they have a very good strategy of educating, you know, nurses. There is a process and, you know, personal and professional growth. Now, um, I, my question will be a couple of the things. When you want someone to be promoted, how many times we have that dialogue of understanding what is that they need to perform better in that particular position. In nursing, we all of us know that we, we are not bound to learn about a particular role before we get prom promoted. You know? It is getting slightly better nowadays that there's a lot of you know, organizations who are trying to train their mid-level nurse managers, but it is not mandatory that you have to finish a particular course and show your competencies before you get confirmed in that role. The reasons can be many. The attrition is one of it, that we don't have enough people to bring in that kind of a rigor into, you know, selecting and confirming people. There are many, many such reasons, but it's good to know that whenever we can, we show that personal interest in their personal and professional growth. Now, without creating a, a larger process or a paraphernalia around growth and development, the next one is an important thing. Our manager turns problems into mentoring. Now, this is very, very important. Your mid-level managers, your supervisors, when they see a problem, do they take the opportunity to create a teachable moment, to create a trainable moment, show them what it can be? I'm sure that a lot of you will answer yes, but probably we get that yes even much more than what we are doing today. And I know from my own experience, we may say yes to many of the things, but in true sense, in reality, we may not be there. And one of the things that can go wrong in any organization is to have a good strategy, a good plan. You know, everything is documented. Everything is happening, you know, the way it is supposed to happen. But believe me, there is a distance between the lip and the cup. So what you have written, may not be happening. So it, the, it's very important that how we try to see whether whatever that you have designed is happening the way it is supposed to happen. So in this particular scenario, they're talking about nursing aides, you know, had a big problem with the patient's current plan. Probably they had difficulty in managing that. So the manager listened to the HCAs, then called for a meeting, then talked to the, you know, uh, doctor and all the nurses and they changed the care plan. So now, whether we invest this much of time into that, that's a question because we are super duper busy. I know that. So I had mentioned to Charlene that I wanted to grow in my career. She took initiative to put me in positions to learn new technology, open hearts, etc. Most recently, she helped me get into a bachelor's program. I'm sure that a lot of you have such stories with you. And uh, so these stories need to become more frequent. I mean, these are, you know, one of that they are writing there. And from uh, they have picked and put these dialogues over there. Now the care part is gone. The growth part is gone. Now it's very easy to remember these three words. Last one is help. Now I would definitely say if someone asks me to rate them, how will you rate them? Which will be on top? Care, growth, help. I would like to hear from you before I say which one I will put right on top. What will you put right on top? Okay, help, care. Others are all thinking, thinking. Okay, care, help. So help, care seems to be running the show. Growth is not yet there. Okay. Great. Thank you. So help is about just being available. Now, this is important. 
I am the nurse residency program coordinator. So it's like a, you know, educator. My chief nursing officer requested to be copied on all communication regarding the nurse residency program progress. Now the next sentence is very important. She consistently responds with support and encouragement. This is very, very important in today's technology world. You know, people do messages, they do send us emails. Now it is very important that, you know, are we responding to them? We will ask many people to copy, keep me copied, keep me copied. But do we take the time to read, understand that whether you need to, you know, step in and help something or give another advice? So that's a question that all of us can ask ourselves. Now, the second sentence, I couldn't tell you who the director was at my previous hospital. These are the nursing heads who run the department from offices. So when the nursing head will stay in her office, the managers also will disappear into their office in case they are lucky to have office. Joe is always walking around and asking me how I'm doing. So she's talking about the previous hospital, the current hospital. She's talking about her manager. Joe is always walking around asking me how I'm doing. Last Friday, I had four patients and one was difficult to turn. Joe jumped in without being asked. That is the crux of it. Are we aware that, you know, we are there to step in and help each other? Is it possible that we are aware that what is happening? Can we connect and step in and help each other? So uh, let's see what does the study talk about? So I put here RCGH. R is for, you know, retention, care, growth, and health. So let's see what did they talk about. They said when there is a caring environment, three times more likely to retain the nurses. Growth, two and a half times more likely. Health, two times more likely. But there is almost a 60 percentage higher chance that a nurse intends to stay in her job despite being in a high stress job if they score high on help. So in the response, if they score on help high, there is a possibility that they will stay despite the fact that the environment is very stressful. So there is a saying that, you know, when I was, um, uh, I was a, uh, Nurse, long, long time ago, I don't know who told me that. When you get up in the morning, when you want to go to your hospital or to your ward, do you feel alone? Are you afraid that you, today I don't know what patient I'm going to get, how many patients I'm going to get, how am I going to manage? Do we feel like that? Or you think, nothing to worry, the team is with me, I don't need to worry. I have heard about you know nurses who say that you know we are happy to work with this particular team lead. I remember in the MICU where I was heading the hospital, the uh, team leader, you know, when the duty roster will be made, all of them will go to the in-charge to say, please schedule me with this chetai. I mean, he was a male nurse, you know, so they'll go and say, please schedule me with that chetai. So I used to ask the nurses, why do you want to work with him? They say that we don't need to ask for help. He's there. He's just there. You know, he's just there helping us. I think I didn't get it so many times, but I'll never forget that unit and that person. You know, there's a story behind that person also. So let's see in the study what works. So what did the study say that what is going to work? So the, the crux is that, you know, be effective at creating connections with your team. Be effective at creating connections and then you can, you know, expect a better retention. So connection is about feeling, not frequency. It's very important to understand. It is not about the number of times that you are going to make connections with your staff. It is the feeling that you exhibit when you actually connect. This is very important. An interaction that showed presence, it's very important, presence. Many times when we are so hard pressed for you know time, when people come to, you know, talk to us about a problem, a concern, they can see that, you know, we are, you know, divided. We are not there. So it, there is a, 
you know, there is a fish philosophy called being present. You know, I, I don't know how many of you read that book around that famous fish market, you know, where people are just thronging to buy fish from that market, not because the fish is the best. It is because the way the people there are present. It's very important to be present with that person at that particular time with, without getting distracted on other things. Planning personalization or follow-up in the way that made it stand out. Remembering to follow up uh, with your team members is very important. Always be collecting dots. Now, this is a new thing that I came across in this article, collecting dots. That means every time you interact with anyone, there are small dots of information. You know, you collect them and you connect them. Now, let's say that, you know, somebody comes to you saying that, you know, ma'am, uh, 25th, you know, I need a leave because my, it is my daughter's birthday. Now that is a dot. So now when the 25th comes, will you remember to call your in charge and tell, you know, happy birthday to your daughter? So these are very small little gestures, you know. And I'm sure that I have been in your place. I have been a nursing head. And I know that uh, I was not 100% successful because I'm very poor with remembering dates and events. I keep on validating it to myself so it gets worse. I, I had to write it in the diary. So if someone comes and tells me on 25th, my daughter's birthday, so I'll go to 25th, turn the page, and I will write there, today is, you know, Tracy's daughter's birthday. So when I reach 25th, I will remember so I can call Tracy and tell, hey, Tracy, it's your daughter's birthday. Uh, enjoy your day. God bless you. That is something. That's how you generate dots. You know, generating dots can be just observing someone. Just asking the person, you know, hey, you look a little lost today. Is there something bothering you? Do you want me to help? If you want to talk to someone, I'm available. That is also collecting dots, you know. When you observe, when you hear, you know, you are able to respond. And same thing with our patients also. You can create collecting dots. We do that. It has become a strategy. You know, if you know that patient is having a birthday, then you cut a cake. Now, the, connect, the collecting dots would be when your nurses know that on that birthday, he would like to get a call from someone. And the nurse takes the opportunity to make a video call and make sure the patient is able to talk to his loved one. That is going to create a lot of magic, right? We don't need to wait for a strategy to happen. And the also article talks about the connection is equal to sacrifice. And I'm very sure all of you agree with that. When you want to make connection in anyone's life, we do take, you know, uh, sacrifice certain things. These are called meaningful moments that you create with anyone and it takes sacrifice. I'm very sure all of you sitting here with the job that you are handling, you do make a lot of sacrifice, you know. So the sacrifice is not just, you know, saying that, you know, it could be your time, your money, ego or, or any other priorities that we may have we may keep it aside for our team members. Now, it's also very important to know you don't have to be like the, in Bible says, let the uh, left hand not know what the right hand is uh, doing or the le left hand if it's doing something right hand. No, for your team, they should know. This is very important. They should be aware that, you know, what what have you sacrificed to for your team? Now, the last one is very, very important. And I cannot tell you how many such experience I have when the leaders have promised something that they could not keep. So don't make promises that you can't keep. Keep the promises you make. So you should very thoughtfully make promises. Without, the, without that, don't make promises. Another feedback that I, uh, this, is, this is real story. When I was in Fortis as a group head, of, I used to go around hospitals. And uh, every time when I go around, there's one of the things that I do is I actually meet with staff nurses directly, minus the nursing head and in charge and everyone, just a group of staff nurses to understand. 
So uh, this group was talking about uh, their nursing leader. So they said, Ki, ma'am, uh, she's very good. You know, she's very good. She's very knowledgeable. But there is one problem. I said, what is the problem? They said, you know, when there is some, some you know, directions come from top, you know, in corporate, there's a lot of things that come from top. When it comes and we find that this is not nurse friendly, so we will have a discussion with ma'am. We will discuss and they will say, I will make sure that I will raise this voice and nurses should not be doing this, you know. She's very strong and they expect, you know, she'll go to the board meeting and she will ensure that it's not being done. And they said, you know, but when she comes back, she'll say, oh, sorry, guys, you know, let's do this. So what happens? The leader loses the credibility, not able to make the connections. These are these are little things that happen, but believe me that our team members are very, very sensitive. They feel it. They may, even if they are not verbalizing it, it leads to a, you know, lack of engagement and belonging of that particular staff to that department or organizations. So better managers, this is from the article, better managers are crystal clear about commitments made and impeccable in keeping them. This is, uh, there is no negotiation here. Promise and you keep it. So if you are doubtful, never promise. You should say that I can do my best. I'm not promising anything. Let's see that. And on rare occasion, in case you cannot keep the commitment, please remember to go back. Apologize and acknowledge that, you know, I was, I'm not able to keep up this, but, you know, I will do this, you know, rather than someone coming and confronting you and saying, hey, ma'am, you told that you are going to do this and you are going. So I, there are a lot of things that all of you have a lot of similar, you know, experiences in your life. And if I open this for discussion, I'm sure that each one of you will have enough and more stories to share. So conclusions and a note to executors. This is written in the article. So in summary, the study does not suggest that employee rounding is intrinsically useless. It's not saying that. It appears, however, that its current implementation in many places is. The how it is being implemented is very important. And the primary reason this has happened is the natural result of flowed measurement. Now, this is a very important statement. And I'll tell you, uh, not only related to leadership, even for other quality indicators, I will tell that, you know, where we, you know, that miss the connections. If you measure rounding compliance rather than leadership connection, in US, this, uh, this is called hardwiring. Hardwiring means it is mandated that, you know, you should be there, you should be meeting patients, you should be meeting the staff. It is hardwired. But you don't get the connection, even making patient rounding. All the you know, managers, team leaders, when you make the patient rounding, if you fail to make the connection with the patient, you're not contributing to a positive patient experience. But today is not about patient rounding. We're talking about employee rounding. So connection is the thing. Leaders in many organizations have chosen to measure activity rather than result. Now, this is where, you know, um, I would, uh, you know, submit that when I do infection control nurses training program, you know, many times I ask, you know, do you audit, you know, bundle compliance, all this CLAPSI, COTI and all that stuff? They say yes. And many organizations, they think because they put a checklist in the file and nurses are ticking, that is compliance how misplaced your understanding will be in case you're doing. Are we trying to tell the accreditation body that this all being ticked so I have a compliance? I tell the ICNs, that's not the case. Do, do a sampling methodology, but audit yourself. You need to talk to the patient. If you're talking about CORTI, catheter care, who will tell that catheter care is given? The patient. You can't say that because the nurse ticked that the catheter care is given. I can give you a lot of stories when I found that this is not the way. And this happened many years ago when the intent was to get people to audit the practice by actually visiting the patient. 
many nurse leaders thought the other way around, just put it in the file and everybody will tick and the compliance is achieved. Nothing can be more wrong than this. Many times it can happen this way, you know, that, you know, you are, in case if any one of you is doing, please, I would ask you to think about it again. And no NABH auditor or JCA would ever say, put all this in the file and people are going to tick. They need a reference point. It does not mean that you have to tick. At the end of the day, they will, you will have to see the result, you know, has it happened. So measurement is an influence tool. I know that all of you know this. What get measured, that will get improved, right? But what do you measure is very important because you want to influence the results. Wise leaders measure their measures by the behavior they post, poster. So when it comes to patient satisfaction, I'm very sure that most of you should rely on your feedback live from the patients. You know, when you talk to them, you know, are my nurses doing this? You, you ask nurses to do hourly rounding. Who is going to tell the hourly rounding is happening? Or four Ps or five Ps or whatever that you have adopted. Who will tell that it is happening? The patients. And if you don't talk to the patients, and if you only look at, you know, there is a checklist given to the nurses and they're going to tick it. Uh, I'm very sorry that, you know, we are on the wrong track. So this is very important to know that this article says that the president <laughs> Please mute yourself. The present study suggests that, the, that a first step to change might be to hold managers accountable for the degree to which those they lead experience care. So that means the managers are responsible for the care, growth, and help of their team members. So that reminds me, when I was doing a leadership um, course in person, it's a long leadership course, I was doing for a large corporate hospital. So we did a 360 feedback from the nurses, from the doctors, et cetera, et cetera. So it was a very interesting uh, finding. You know, one of the questions which was asked was that I get regular breaks when I'm on duty. So what do you think? Was the answer great or it was not at all good? What do you think? If we ask that question to your nurses today, so. Asha is telling no. So I'll, I'll say that, you know, majority, majority of the nurses, barring one or two, you know, just in single digit, everybody else wrote no, we do not get break. And one nurse probably was so upset that she had written something more. She said, you know, forget about us not getting the break, but my in charge will every day take her break. So what is the message that is coming? So I, I don't need to decipher that response to any one of us. So that this is what is very important. You know, we may put a lot of guidelines and do this and do that, but will that really happen? I have had, you know, warden charges who will disappear for their lunch during handover. So I had to, I had to do many different things to ensure that they are driven to the right behaviors. So I'm sure that many of you also have such experience, but I would really request you to look at things with a different eyes now with the behavior that you want to achieve, get that measured. It is not about, you know, how many times you did what, that is not important, okay? So let's measure the right things. It is not only important about the employee rounding, patient rounding for everything that we do, all the quality indicators that we track, it is very important to know what exactly are we measuring. The outcomes are good. Outcomes are to be measured. There is a structure, quality indicator, process, and outcome. I'm very sure that all of you are you know, aware of that. I don't need to tell that. The only reason I'm staying here is because of the management that I work under. I don't know how many of our nurses will that you know though our environment is very different but still 
they have put so much of themselves into trying to make us feel supported. It's very important. Not everything stops at the nursing head. I totally agree with that. Nursing head needs to influence the top leaders to be seen and heard and interact with their team members. I remember when I was a nursing head, I will just go to the facility director's office and say, you, I, you have given me 15 minutes. You are coming with me right now. You need to talk to my nurses. Let them see you. Ask them how you can help. So sometimes, you know, we have to influence our top leaders to get involved in what nursing is doing. What are their challenges? So what they have been doing is not just their job description, yet they do it so that they know they have our backs and so that patients don't die. So imagine that all of us are doing all that we are doing to ensure that our patients are safe. Now, who is giving care to our patients? These are all those frontline nurses. So it is just smart leadership to pay attention to the frontline people. The, we are talking about nursing today. It could be any of the frontline workers who are there to ensure that you know we are doing the right thing and we are measuring the right things. So the, these are the authors that you see here. So Joseph Grenny, co-founder of Crucial Learning, and Crucial Conversation, Crucial Influence, and Crucial Confrontation. There are three books. I think I have all the three books. And Robin Begley, and uh, she's one lady that I met in US many years ago. I'm happy to see that she's still the CEO of AONN. So we'll see. And, uh, you know, um, I'm going to look at the time because otherwise it's already 2019. If you want, uh, please message, you know, here there is, a, you know, innovative nurse retention strategies they're talking about. And they're not uh, very different from uh, what we will be doing. So I'm just going to skip this for now. And um, in case you're doing, going to do something different because you came here, please drop a message. I'll be more than happy to share that story with all the you know trainings, leadership trainings that I do. I would like to share that this is also many of you, some of you I know personally, but some strategy that you changed because you were privy to this particular study, please let me know. So the next one that I'm going to come up is the leader's guide to influence. So <laughs> this is also from Crucial Learning. Please let me know that, do you think that if I come and do these sessions, you know, for an, one hour session that it is going to be useful to you because you people are super duper busy and you don't have time to read about all this. And if I share this, do you think that uh, you'll be happy to come and join me? I can see Juliet saying yes. Okay. So if you if you all are you know game, I am also happy to be coming back to you and uh, ensuring that you know I'm sharing whatever you know leadership insights are coming from other countries. And uh, if you think that you know we should also have our own insights around these things, um, uh, apart from wearing the hat of founder, uh, the founder CEO of Signia Healthcare, uh, I am also part of the nursing executive. Uh, association association of nurse executives india many of you are here you are already members in case any one of you want to join please visit the uh, website www.anei.in and please become members and if some of these can get translated into some study some survey in our country it will be nice to have such uh, you know um, insights into our own environment, you know. So uh, if anybody has got any questions or anything to share before I wrap up. So I'm going to say a very big thank you to each one of you. Thank you so much. And I will stop the recording and then it will be free for all uh, to share.